Hello, I'm Ron Charles. I write about books for The Washington Post, and this is The Book Report. This month, we've got books from pre-Civil War America to the election of Barack Obama, the rise of Silicon Valley, and the future of the planet. For 140 years, people have been reading, praising, and condemning the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Well, get ready to see Mark Twain's classic in a strikingly different light. Percival Everett, the author of Erasure, the novel that inspired the Academy Award-winning film American Fiction, has just published a new novel called James. It retells Huckleberry Finn from the perspective of Huck's enslaved friend Jim. And believe me, that one change changes everything. With this comic, sometimes terrifying story, Everett delivers a sharp satire of racism and more than one shocking surprise. Great Expectations, no, not that one, is a new novel by Vincent Cunningham, a theater critic for The New Yorker. Inspired by his own experiences, it tells the story of a young man who gets a job as a fundraiser for the presidential campaign of a black senator from Illinois. Now, the candidate is never named, but you'll figure it out from Cunningham's pitch-perfect descriptions. The real subject, though, is this thoughtful narrator, raised in a Pentecostal church, looking at the candidate and his wealthy donors and trying to figure out what kind of man he'll become in a nation woven from money and faith. Taya Obrecht has written magical tales involving tigers in the Balkans and camels in the Arizona Territory. Her new novel, The Morning Side, is set in a future ravaged by climate change. An 11-year-old girl named Sylvia has emigrated with her mother to an island city that will remind you of New York. There they live with Sylvia's aunt, who's in charge of a once grand high-rise apartment building. But unable to go to school, Sylvia turns her curious mind to her strange neighbors, particularly one woman who owns three unusual dogs that may turn into men during the day. Kara Swisher has been chronicling the wonders and shenanigans of Silicon Valley since people were dialing up AOL to hear, you've got mail. Now, in her new memoir, Burn Book, a tech love story, Swisher takes us through her journey as a reporter who not only covered the rise of the web, but became one of its leading voices, even as she became increasingly disillusioned with the arrogance of internet billionaires and their reckless empires. All the usual suspects are here, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and others, along with Swisher's signature bravado and insightful criticism. Well, that's it for the book report. For these and other suggestions about what to read, consult your librarian or local bookseller. I'm Ron Charles. Till next time, read on.